everybody, and welcome to the Music Ranking, Reviewing, and Rating Podcast, what we call Music Meltdown, in which we take the discography, theme, or just any musical topic and whatnot, and sort of rate, review, and sort of give our overall opinions on. For today's discography, we are going to be talking about the very eclectic, very unique, and um, incredibly varied discography of Roxy Music, led by Brian Ferry, as well a starting point for a legendary um, producer and electronic artist, Brian Eno. As well, you have the incredible work of, um, I believe, Phil Manzanera. And I'm blanking on his name. I believe it is Andy McKay, who does the sax work as well. And there's a drummer, but I honestly forgot to look up his name because it's a drummer. So, Paul Thompson. Ah, nice. Came out here with the facts. Shout out drummers. Uh, I, pulled, really? I pulled. I pulled the wiki page, so you know. Uh, sh- shout outs to Aiden King, drummer. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. And uh, and Brian Wilson. I guess he drummed once or twice, maybe. With that being oh. said, though, I'll cut to the chase. I already showed you guys, but I own all of these. I'm pretty well versed in this catalog. I I want to say this was my either my second or third time, possibly even fourth time, a full catalog. Actually, I'm really familiar. Um, but every time I go back to them, my rating really shifts around. Things go up, things go down. It, it's a really eclectic, like I was saying, discography. A ton of really unique uh, movements and transitions between all the records and it's an interesting band just for the review and to rate because it really does break into uh, subsections if you prefer the early electronic Eno stuff, if you prefer the more sort of glammy, heavier rocking material in the middle, or if you go for more of the pop leaning affairs towards the end. That being said, though, uh, let's go ahead and ask what do you guys know about rocks and music going into things? Yeah, uh, Cammy, go for it. All right. Um, I, I never really knew about them before beforehand I, I knew the name like and by i knew the name i mean i heard my uncle bring him up once in passing and that was it and uh i did hear their cover of jealous guy from whatever the hell album it's from and i liked it so when adri asked me to uh do this video with her i was like i'll give it a shot and uh yeah it was a good time uh, i still can't nail down like what they're genre is i don't th- i don't think they have one i just think they're you know they're just their own thing and i appreciate that and i had a really good time going through this more so than i thought i would i, I think if you had to pin them down probably art rock would be where yeah. i would that, that's probably where i would end but yeah a lot of different ground covered here oh yeah 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 so i um i i did not know Roxy Music very well at all. Um, I I knew that Brian Eno was associated in some way um, to them, but that's true about <laughs> several bands. So uh, knowing his influence is uh, not necessarily t- uh, you know that telling, I guess, for for knowledge about a band. But um, I did know more than this, um, of course that was it's been a hit throughout my life pretty sure it was in grand theft auto vice city um and then i knew oh yeah um from flesh and blood that one was familiar to me so i think those were the only two songs that i really knew going into this um which given their kind of big discography and um how larger than life some of this music is is kind of surprising that um i don't know i I didn't really hear more of it just natively but uh, very, very grateful to have gone through this. Thank you for inviting me to this because um, this was an awesome discovery for me. Absolutely. It's, it's, I'm kind of surprised that of all the songs that you knew, you knew, oh yeah, from Flesh and Blood. That, that's, a, that's a deep cut right there. That's, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, it's a shame because from what I've read and from what I've heard, these guys really weren't all that successful in the States until Avalon when they started having their bigger hits, like some minor stuff and maybe some decent hits before them, but Avalon was a real big record and then they stopped. So, all right. And also real quick, uh, Cammy, that, that is one badass uncle bringing up Roxy music, massive respect there. Yeah. I don't even know 
I don't even remember the context for it. He just brought him up, and I'm like, oh, that sounds familiar. And I just never thought about it again. That's that's all you need right there. Mm-hmm. That being said, uh, anybody looking to start things out today? Doesn't really matter to me who it is. Uh, I'll start. Why not? Sounds good to me, man. All right. Uh, just to preface this, uh, I think all these albums are pretty good. Uh, none of these are below a seven for me. That being said, my, my number eight is Manifesto from 1979. It's a good album. I like it a lot. Title track's good. I like Angel Eyes. Dance Away is pretty fun. It's just not as exciting as the other stuff. Not, it's, it's, it's like, I don't know. It's, it's the worst of the best, but the worst is still better than most. You know, most bands like best album. So I guess you can go with that. It's just, uh, I don't know. It's not as like, not as strange and like off, off color like the other albums are. But it's still good. I, I listen to it over, let's say, Dance into the Light or some shit like that. So yeah, I give it like a 7 out of 10. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll get the flesh and blood later. So sorry about that. <laughs> no, you're all good, man. And uh, yeah, I'd rather listen to most records instead of Dance into the Light, though. So yeah, fair enough. All, all, all good there. Uh, Chris, do you want to keep things going? And uh, you go next, and I'll uh, round this out being the resident Roxy Music lover here. Sure. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, my number eight is also Manifesto. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know about this one. Um, you know, I, I think I think it gets maybe a little too much praise <laughs> from what I've read online. And I, I, I don't know. I, I just don't I don't quite get it. Um, the, the instrumentation is still pretty smooth here. Um, and I, it, it's not like it's a bad listen. Um, I don't think any of these records are bad, as Cami said. I just think that other than kind of the title track and Dance Away, um, there's not really a whole lot for me here that would necessitate another listen through. It's, it, it's just not really as exciting. I think, I think the songwriting is kind of a step down. And um, I'm, it, it's good. It's good. It's not great. Um, I, I, do, I do like the track, uh, Ain't That So. Um, I like that it's like kind of the slow intro and then the drums uh, come in and really liven it up. But, um, and, and I do think that Fairy sounds great throughout this album. Um, certainly not bad. I just think in the context, listening through all these albums, it was just my least favorite sound of theirs. So um, something had to end up at number eight. Um, I give it uh, the we doing out of 10. Um, I, I gave it three out of five. So uh, 3.0. Okay. Interesting that you say it gets too much praise. That is pretty much universally considered the worst Roxy music record by most people. Well, so um, maybe, maybe by most people, maybe yeah. by rate your music, but yeah. not in the, not in the communities that we're, um, oh. we're in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. We're in a safe haven, but um. <laughs> Yeah, we won't be talking about Manifesto for a good while. I thought um, so, yeah. Yeah, yeah I figured. I knew that was yeah. going to happen. All right, but um, yeah. Oh, well, like you're saying, there isn't a bad Roxy Music record. Even my very bottom, I have it three and a half. Uh, I love this band. And I know that this is going to uh, turn some eyes. And I want to preface this by saying it's a good record. But at number eight for me, I have Avalon. Um, to me... I think I think this is a bit of a weird record for Roxy Music, in my opinion. Oh, while they were playing with uh, pop on Flesh and Blood and Manifesto, this is a record where they sort of like fully dive into just embracing entirely pop music. And I don't love it. Uh, there's still some incredibly so- strong pop material on here. I just don't think that this is their sound. I don't think that the interludes really fit very much. And the title track kind of bores me a little bit. And I think after Take a Chance with Me, it does lose a bit of steam. Uh, despite that, more than this is great. I really like the space between While My Heart is Still Beating and Take a Chance with Me. I do think that it's a good record. I have it at three and a half stars. It just isn't what I personally look for in Roxy Music. And I think that a similar sound to what was happening here ended up getting improved upon on uh, later Brian Ferry's solo work, which I know a decent bit of that especially after Roxy Music just ended. And I do really like what I've heard. And I think that a little bit of the Avalon sound gets flushed out there. 
and I like it a decent bit there. But um, yeah, just not really for me, but still good. Fair enough. That's fair. I we'll be getting to uh, Avalon a lot later than than Adri did, but that's besides the point. All right, moving on. My number seven is Flesh and Blood for real this time from 1980. Uh, yeah, this is like a seven and a half out of ten for me. It opens up pretty strong with In the Midnight Hour. I really like that song. It's not very like like lyrically complex or or deep, but you know, it's it's a fun bop. You can just, you know, nod your head to it, have a good time. And, and the instrumentation on all these albums is fucking sublime. Like every album just like that there's there's not like a bad sound on it at all. It's crazy. But anyway, the dick riding aside, oh yeah, it's an okay song. Uh, like I like I talked about before, um, not really my thing. It's I'm not sure why it has 20 million plays on Spotify, but you know it's a it's a decent track. And uh, the middle chunk from same old scene up to eight miles high, I dig quite a bit. Um, I'm not sure if it's because these are covers and they're just done well or if it's, if it's just the instrumentation and the songwriting or both but yeah I, I had a good time with the middle chunk and rain rain and no strange delight eh, they're kind of they're, they're there they're fine and running wild I think is a nice little closer but yeah a good album kind of they kind of uh, drop that um I like weird kooky like hard rock like synth type thing they had in the 70s and more of like a uh what was contemporary at the time like 80s like synth art pop whatever you want to call it but i take this song quite a bit it's uh it's a solid record and i'd listen to it again if i could well i i, I can but i would listen to it again for sure it's a good time 7.5 out of 10 for me cool yeah um I agree with a lot of what you're saying, and I'll be echoing that, but not quite yet. Um, this feels bad. Um, my number seven is Country Life. Um, ooh, yeah, this one's going to put me in hot water. I think this is a good record. Um, again, I think I think all of these are are fun and I, I i'm i'm at three and a half here for country life so um i do i do like it um i think this album is quite front loaded um and i think that it lacks some personality that um the the previous records had um that i really came to appreciate about about the the first couple um thrill of it all is obviously a banger um and i think I think all the way through all I want is you and out of the blue, this, this album starts very strong. Um, unfortunately, that's kind of where it falls off for me. Um, Bittersweet is pretty good. I like the, the kind of booming percussion and uh, you know, after the kind of sleepy intro, it's like this, this kind of marching booming um, percussion sounds. And um, I just don't think that, that sound I, I like I like that song and and out of context I think it would be really great but in in context of the album I, I don't think it segues really well from um uh if it takes all night before it and triptych after it um kind of a weird segment of of songs there and and frankly those are kind of duds to me so um, I don't know. It's it's missing uh, je ne sais quoi for me that the previous records had, and um, I I don't know if it's they're they're finally feeling Brian Eno's absence, uh, you know, two albums later. But um, it feels short of being great for me. I I feel bad. I think it's really good. I do give it a three and a half out of five. It's country life at number seven. Well, Chris. Oof. For uh, starting fires, let's do it together, buddy. That's also my number seven. Nice. Wow. Oh, my <laughs> okay. God. Well, I think okay. I know what we were talking about before, Cammie. Um, th th this record falling lower down the list has nothing to do with it being weaker than most records. To clarify, I'm already at four stars. I think this is a very good record. But 
it just comes down to showcasing how just absurdly strong this catalog is, in my opinion. Uh, this was their fourth record and their most straightforward up to that point, further embracing glam rock more than they had before. Uh, Ferry feels like he's stepping up to be more of a frontman on this record, and the guitars are a little bit more of a focus. Uh, the writing seems a decent bit more built around the choruses, the hooks, and the melodies, and it shows further how excellent Brian Ferry is as a vocalist, which is kind of a point of contention with a lot of people in Roxy music. Uh, I've heard that some people can't really get into the band because they're not as crazy about his voice, kind of a little heavy on the vibrato, which um, fair enough. I do understand it. You are absolutely incorrect. Brian Ferry is incredible. So um, yeah, moving forward from there, my favorite songs would be The Throw of It All, All I Want Is You, uh, Casanova, A Really Good Time, and I absolutely love The Closer, Prairie Rose. If I'm being brutally honest, I think this is an outstanding record. There's so many great things going for it. I just don't like it as much as the three before it or a lot of what came after it. So it falls at number seven, but don't get your panties in too much a bunch, Cammy. I still think that it's very strong. Uh, yeah. Yeah, my panties are already in a bunch. Thank you very much. But, you know, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll untangle those later, or I will at least. All right. We've had some uh, some doozies from these two. Uh, this one might uh, this one might you know top those. My number six. I want to keep want to make this crystal clear. This album's great, but it was the hardest for me to get into. It took me a couple listens to really get it. My number six is 1972's Roxy Music, the debut. And yeah, it's a it's a good record. I like it. Uh, Brian Eno's weird synth stuff's great. Um, the fucking drum solo at the end of uh, was it remake remodel is great. That song's kind of eh, but that part especially was insanely good. Yeah, I could see Adri freaking having a heart attack right now. It's all good. <laughs> You're gonna give me a damn seizure. <laughs> oh man, Lady Tron, I love too. And if there is something very uh, very interesting, like the tunes and. I, I can see, going back to Chris's point, or was it Adri's point, sorry, about Brian Ferry's voice, probably both of you guys. Uh, his voice is the big sticking point for this album. If you don't like his voice, you're going to hate the rest of the albums. You, you got you to gotta get past it. I will admit, the first listen, his voice was, was kind of fucking annoying, but you, you get used to it as, a, as you go along. And his and he would become a much better singer. And even here, he's he's fine. I just I don't know. I, I wasn't really used to his like theatrical a, a plum or whatever the hell like his weird way of like speaking and like t uh, singing. But you know, it grows on you quite a bit. Uh, Virginia Plains pretty good, but it just kind of cuts off and ends. I don't really I don't like that. It gave that gave me uh that gave me pull me under flashbacks. So. Yeah, Chris knows what I'm talking about. Uh, two HB is pretty good. I, lo I love the Bob Medley. It's such a bizarre track, but it's so much fun. Would You Believe is pretty good. And my favorite track is Sea Breezes, a nice little seven minute, like, you know, like, what do you call it? It's just a vibe. Like, I haven't really heard much like it. And I, I still kind of, it still kind of takes me away even when I hear it like the third time today and bitter's end is a good closer but yeah it's a great album it's like a it's basically an eight out of ten but i think they would do better though they they get better as they went along you know flesh and blood and manifesto notwithstanding this is clearly just a stepping stone you know like a like a, a leap into better things a nice little experiment and if they didn't continue, this would be an, it'd be a nice little, I guess, novelty 70s album. But on it, like, on its own, it's fine. But as a nice little, like, what do you call it? Gateway into the weirdness that is Roxy music. It's a good time. So, yeah, I'd recommend it. But, you know, just watch out for the voice. If you don't like it, it's probably, you're probably not going to like the band. Uh, I have two things to say there. I, I will say, as much as I love, uh, Brian Ferry's voice, he can really piss me off at points. He he does get a little irritating. 
doing it all at once but i mean i, I still love his voice regardless and um uh pull me under i actually looked it up i'm pretty sure this was the only song that i liked on that record so um was it actually uh currently it's my favorite dream theater song oh man Assuming i got the right thing so strong one yeah, yeah. I, I have to like something you do yeah those are the rules uh, okay my number six it's flesh and blood um this couldn't be any higher i don't think um but <laughs> i do think it's kind of fun um i don't know i don't know if this album is really that good um <laughs> objectively um I, I don't know I, I i can't really tell i i think i think the sounds are pretty good um the instrumentation is still cool and fun and um i i think i think it just comes back to being a fun listen for me than being their their best um you know i think the singles the couple singles whatever they are i i happen to really like oh yeah and um you know i think they really lean into the synths on this album for sure and it it's it's a it's a clear step away from the glam um and and while i i, I do miss some of that i i think that uh you know the, the air of this one is just it's just refreshing and uh yeah midnight hour oh yeah um, I just think that's a really cool opening sequence. Same old scene is awesome. Um, you get that intro that sounds like Heart of Glass. Um, it's like a little synth percussion thing um, before it breaks into this danceable jam, not unlike Heart of Glass. So, um, you know, like Cammy said, rain, 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 and uh, no strange delight. I, I, those those don't really do anything for me. And I don't think they really set up end for the final track, which, which I do like the final track, but um, I, you know, it, when an album kind of ends like that and, and leaves you to just hinge on one final track to kind of rescue it, it, uh, it, it kind of speaks to the overall, you know, uh, flow of the album. So I think this album feels a little more consistent than country life to me. And it's just more fun. So um it's a three out of five it's my number six it's my last three out of three and a half out of five um it's my last one of those we'll get to four soon but um it's flesh and blood all right i'm gonna piss on some people's parades real quick Ooh. um i'm sorry once again very good album i'm just gonna put it up I'm talking about for your pleasure oh okay. no <laughs> I apologize, Cammy. Those panties must be twisted hard right now. Yeah, but, they, um, they, t- they turned to dust. They're gone. My, <laughs> god- <laughs> my goddamn bully in an eighties, uh, an eighties high school romp or something. But um, in some ways, I'd say that this record's probably better than the debut. Um, primarily, the production. It's way cleaner. It's a much more tighter sounding record. And while I don't have any issues with the debut record, you can kind of tell it was just, it was a little bit rushed in the production state. Um, as well, I think Eno found his place in the band a good bit better on this record. Um, his parts tend to act better as a general backbone to most of the record, and they sort of blend in in a much more nice way. Despite that, I just think the songs are a bit of a step down. And I didn't care all that much for The Bogus Man. Drags a little bit for me. Doesn't give me too much reason to grip onto it. But um, every other song, really good. Do the Strand through um, An Every Dream Home, A Heartache is very strong. Um, and I think it closes incredibly well with the title track. It, it's worse in smaller ways, but overall, it, it's still an incredibly strong four-star record. Very good. Um, yeah, I, I really like it a lot. So I, I probably like most of these records more than you guys. So it's like, it, it's relative, but... My my ranking's a little bit wacky. I won't lie. It's all relative, just a bit. Uh, all right. Well, after getting my heart broke by by Adri for the second time tonight, I guess I'll <laughs> I guess I'll move on. You're you're still good, Chris. As of now. We'll yeah, see. we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll give it a wait, couple more spots. Wait, he had country life at seven too. It's true. 
You did it to your first. Yeah, but I I, I kind of get country life for your pleasure. I I, I, can't, I can't forgive, <laughs> and you'll see why soon. I wonder Speaking where that's country. gonna place. Oh yeah, if, if you couldn't tell. Speaking of country life, my number five is 1974's Country Life. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is a this is a fucking good time. Uh, opens great, thrill of it all. Just kind of throws you in there, just right at the forefront. You can't really fault them for that. Uh, three and nine's okay. All I want is you out of the blue. Pretty sweet tunes. Bittersweet's also great. A nice little five minute track. Uh, it takes all nights. All right. Triptych is uh, all right. This is the only fuck. This is the only Roxy music song I genuinely do not like. I think this song is boring as fuck. It's just it's it's nothing. It's like it's like the guy wants to be Brian Eno so bad and have weird ambient like synth, synth stuff, but you're not that guy, pal. You're not Brian Eno. 16. You're not that guy, pal. Trust me, you're not that guy. Get 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 the fuck off the keyboard. Do something else. No, I'm kidding. But yeah, that song is not great. The other three songs, especially Prairie Rose, the closer, are fantastic. But the craziest part about this album is the fucking cover. I'm surprised they got away with having that cover in like the mid '70s. It, it, yeah, it, it makes you wonder if it kind of makes you like think like, hey, no wonder these guys didn't do well in the states with that fucking with those crazy ass covers like that. But yeah, cover aside, pretty good album. It's a, it's a, it's just nice and fun. It's a good little, like, I don't know, like house party album, a triptych, uh, notwithstanding. But yeah, uh, I give this an eight out of ten as well. Look, which I think I believe I gave the debut. It's fun. Uh, sounds great. Mostly, uh, the songwriting's pretty, uh, bombastic and crazy, and some good guitar work, and bass playing from. Phil Zara and the other guy, which will be a constant on these albums. But on here, I, I on here I feel I gotta make a mention of it because I haven't really done it before. But yeah, uh, Brian, you know, was sorely missed on this album. But you know, it's it's, it's a good record overall. Uh, you know, I, I listened to it again, which will be a common theme if you couldn't tell already. But yeah, eight out of ten, good album. Well, I'm 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 happy to hear that wasn't anyone's number one because I I did feel bad about having to put it so low. Um, but th- thanks for softening the blow. Yeah, no um, so my number five, uh, we're at four stars now. So I think there are five Roxy Music albums that I quite like. Um, I really like. I think they're great. Uh, we're gonna start the lowest four. It's still a four. Um. It's Siren. Um, this is a cool one. I, I, I'm really impressed with the sounds on this record. I, I knew, I, I guess I knew Love is the Drug. I don't know if I mentioned that at the beginning, but that, that one I knew. Um, yeah, okay. More than this, Love is the Drug, and, and oh yeah, I think were the three tracks that I was familiar with, but um, I didn't know anything uh, about this other than uh, Love is the Drug. And uh, the the glam on this album is just awesome. Um, and I think given this is the last of the kind of initial run of albums, this is the last for several years. Um, I think I think they cap this this section off beautifully. Um, you know, the the production on this album gives just a really nice space for all the instruments to shine, and uh, it's it's nine songs. They don't overstay. Um, I, I don't think they overstay on any of these albums, by the way. I think I think they are all quite tidy, and uh, that's something I really appreciate about um, about the band. They're, they're, uh, most of these albums, I think, are like eight or nine songs, so they kind of get in, they they jam out, and then they leave you alone. Um, and this record, uh, Fairy's voice is just awesome throughout. I mean, it it, it is. It, it's I don't know if it's my favorite uh, of his vocal performances here, but it's it's very strong. And um, on Love is the Drug, especially, I mean, his his voice, it, it just it just melts into the guitars like butter. It's just so beautiful. I, I just love it. Um, Sentimental Fool has this like two minute, <laughs> two and a half minute slow intro um, that just kind of creeps and uh 
I think it's kind of nice. I, I it's a little it, it kind of takes you out of um out, out of the jam a little bit, but uh I think they kind of make up for it. And then uh Whirlwind comes in and it's it's as frantic as the name implies. Um but I think they handle that tempo really well. Um obviously you know the the whole the whole band are just they they sound so good by this point and uh I I think that um Ferry especially his vocal flares just sound so good so confident um in his style um both ends burning is great and nightingale is another standout um just another high is kind of long but i think it's uh, still a nice closer like i said the albums are still tidy even though they have like these eight or nine minute songs on there so um i think there's space for that um on these records and I think I think this this album, um, they're not my favorite set of songs, but I think it's a very consistent run. And I, I think that the instrumentation just sounds awesome here. I think Fairy sounds awesome. Every song basically stands strong and it's it's overall very good. I, I have I have very little issues with with this this record. So I, I give it a, a four four point out of five. Um, it's Siren. It's my number five, and and we're only getting better. So nice. Um, That's what I like to see. Nice. Uh, unfortunately, we're back to me, and um, I didn't realize, but I think I woke up and I chose violence today. Ooh. Oh. Uh, my number five is Stranded. Come on. Here, here's what I'm gonna say. This is the first record of theirs without Brian Eno, and it showcases just the immense talent that this group has, even more. Uh, this is one of their many transitionary records. It meets in the middle of their art rock and glam rock waning material, and it's just incredible. Um, Fairy is amazing across this entire record. This has some of Manzanera's most direct and best work up to this point. I also feel like the sax work is used to occupy a lot of the space that Eno's electronic touches were using on For Your Pleasure, and it makes for an incredibly unique sound. I just loved every song here, but my favorites would have to be Street Life, Amazona, A Song for Europe, and Mother of Pearl. And this may be my number five, but um, I'm already at four and a half stars. I think this is, an, I think this is a great record. And, and you guys know I'm not exactly that kind of a grader, but I have five Roxy Music records at four and a half stars. So I'm a, I'm a bit of a fangirl, if you will. That's strong. That's strong. Yeah, I can respect that. At least you uh, gave that album a good score. I'd be horribly depressed if it was lower than a four and a half <laughs> my apologies uh, i misspoke it's actually a two out of ten. Oh, oh god all right two out well, of ten all right it was a good show guys i'll see y'all later <laughs> i completely forgot uh brian you know left the band after stranded I, th- I thought he left other country life i guess that's how good the synth work is on stranded he, he left after for your pleasure oh you're right yeah he was only oh, there for I was the double first wrong. Two. yeah yeah it's all good yeah, I guess uh, I guess it shows how good they could be without them. It's crazy, but anyway, my number four, and uh, I'm probably gonna echo Chris a bit here with with the uh, with the with the analysis, what little there is of mine. My number four is Siren from 1975. Um, this album is phenomenal. Love is the drug is a fantastic opener. Uh, pretty primo guitar work from my good man. Phil Man and Zara, and some good vocals from Brian as well. Um, and the line's also pretty good. The whole album's great. It's just, it's very heavy, kind of a little dark sounding, kind of. I'm, I'm probably going to sound like a lunatic for saying this, and you, you guys probably know what I'm talking about because I've mentioned this before. Um, this album kind of reminds me of the, uh, oh, who's that guy? Like the, uh, the, the John Wheaton era of King Crimson, like you know, Red specifically. Um, just like the way the vocals sound and like how heavy the guitar work can be, and just kind of like the weird, kind of dark, creepy vibe of the album, just kind of, I don't know, gives me the, gives me those weird prog vibes, which apparently they're a prog band according to some people, which you know, whatever, fine. Um, yeah, moving on. Sentimental Fool, Whirlwind, good songs. She Sells, I'm not really crazy about. It's kind of kind of a meandering track, doesn't really go anywhere, but it's fun. 
can't really can't really hate on it too much. Good happen to me is pretty decent. I love both ends burning and Nightingale as well. And just another high is a good closer. Oh yeah, this album is fucking wonderful. Um, here onwards, I'm gonna rank these a lot higher than I than I did before. So yeah, I'm going for a nine on this one. This album is delightful. I love the way I love the instrumentation. I love the vocals. I just love how uh, it's how like weird and creepy it could be. It could be at times, and um, it's probably their heaviest album. Maybe Would I, am I wrong? Or it's it's up there for sure. Their early stuff was like their seventy stuff specifically was pretty pretty heavy. But I think this album kind of sells that. But yeah, it's a superb album, and I definitely want to listen to this one again. So yeah, not, nine out of ten, beautiful album. Might just be me, but I think I would say for their heaviest, it might be the debut. Or maybe that's just because that one has sort of the most energy and is the most sort of, I don't know. I, 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 I get what I mean. Yeah, it's a siren just like kind of hits harder for me. I'm not sure why. True. Even, True. even if they kind of sound the same. For sure. Or similar, at least not the same. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. I, I think, you know, um, heavy on the glam side translates to the you know some of the darker themes and, and sounds that you, that you were describing so uh okay my number four right um my number four is a four star record it's very good i like it a little more than siren um it's for your pleasure uh i do wish i could put it a little bit higher um but i can't this is a common number one, I think. So don't light me up. I have it at number four. These are hard. These are these are pretty hard <laughs> to to rank at this point for me, um, because I really like this one. I th- this one is is quite unique. Um, I mean, really, the first two albums are are kind of you know I think it's I think it's the Brian Eno treatment are are strong on them, and and I I quite like the flair that that's put on there. Um, my only complaints about this album before I get into what I like about it is, is bogus man is, is, is bogus. It's too long. It's, it, there's no reason. And, uh, and I'm not that fond of beauty queen. I don't think that song does much at all for me. So I'm sorry. I see your head shaking. I'm sorry. All right. Okay. Complaints over. That's it. That's all I got. The rhythm section on this record is phenomenal. It is, it is so much fun. It, it, this thing sounds incredible even the songs i don't care for they they sound good all right they just don't the grooves are phenomenal um and i think the other six songs stand very tall and and regardless of how i feel about uh, you know bogus man being too long beauty queen i think the album flows very cleanly it's it's an enjoyable experience um my favorite part of this record is um on every home where it goes silent for like 15 seconds and you're like well, the fuck's going on is the track over and then it just throws you into this tunnel like it's just the, this uh, this tunnel effect and it's just the drums and the guitar going bad and um absolutely bananas they, they obviously had a lot of fun recording this and it shows um it's very tidy it's eight songs eight tracks um this is a very cool one i i don't think it's their number one I have a couple minor complaints, but I'm I'm excited to listen to this again, and hopefully it can it can reach four point five for me because I, I I do think it's a lot of fun. Um, for your pleasure, number four. Nice. I uh, I wonder if that's anybody's number one in here. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure. We'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll have um, to find out. I, I will say one thing with how uh, Cammy was reacting to how we feel about the bogus man. Uh, he finally understands how I felt. When these, when him and Tavi were somehow praising the "Tomorrow Never Knows" cover by Phil Collins, yeah, I, 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 I walked a mile in your shoes tonight. You, you understand my pain. Yeah, I, I and, see what you went through, and I'm gonna that last and, video, and I'm gonna make you two hurt more. Oh, because <laughs> above above the classic records that I've rated, I have Flesh and Blood. Wow. Okay, here, yeah. here's here's one thing. I, I gotta I, hear this. I gotta say. For a while, I thought that this was like second from the bottom, and I was pretty, you know, fine with that. But um, I was shocked this time around. I, I mentioned that I need to re-listen to one record. This is the record that I needed to go back to. 
Um, but yeah, I really was digging this on my realist. And I think what really came down to it is me getting more and more into traditional 80s pop sounds because I struggled with that sort of like up front, just like over the top 80s pop for a while. And um, this record, I'm not sure how familiar you two are, but it reminds me a lot of Prefab Sprout. Notably, Jordan the Comeback and From Langley Park to Memphis has big sophista pop vibes to me. And I love those records. I love this record for that as well. Um, yeah, I just think it's an amazing pop rock record. It's definitely not their most complex, but I think from a song from song level, it's just incredibly strong. Um, In the Midnight Hour and Eight Miles High are great covers. Oh Yeah is an amazing pop song. Sam with the title track. And I think it closes incredibly with Running Wind. Wild. Uh, the only song I didn't love here was Rain, Rain, Rain. But I mean, so a Roxy Music song, so it fucking rips. Um, I, I have this at four and a half stars. I can't really defend it. Like, I'm not I'm not insane for having this as high as I do. But um, yeah, just a really great record, in my opinion. Yeah, I, res I respect that. It's a good album. These are all good. It's, it's not really, I don't know. It's, just, They're all good. It's, it's fucking insanely hard to rank these as a... This is like yes. a, Her a Herculean task. This is the 13th labor. <laughs> like freaking ranking Roxy music albums. But yeah, moving on. Uh, my number three is 1982's pop classic. Uh, that's Is that saying much from that year? Maybe. It, it, it's a good year. And that's one of the better albums from that year. I'm talking about Avalon. It's, uh, it's their last album. Somehow, I thought they'd go on for longer which is my main complaint about this album. It's too short. It's 37 minutes and 31 seconds. I'm, I'm reading the time from Spotify, but you know, it's, it's really short compared to the other ones. And none of these albums are that, that long anyway. And when it ended, I was like, that's it. Like, I want more. Like, that's how good it is. Like, despite it's, it's length. I, 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 oh shit. Sorry. I, I need, I needed more. I, I needed more than this. Uh, Sorry. Oh, come on. Yeah. Uh, I, I had to. You bastard. Yeah. It was, a, it was my shining opportunity. Speaking of, that's a great song. And I'm surprised I never heard it before. It's wonderful. It's a classy like pop tune. The chorus is great. Brian Ferry sings at top form. It's a good time. The Space Between is also very good. And I love Avalon, the title track. It's just this very atmospheric and kind of it's kind of a weird album to or, sorry it's a weird song to play from this album i'm surprised it's yeah. as popular as it is because it, ha it has like over 70 million plays in spotify which is bizarre to me because of like how weird it sounds but yeah it's a great song and india is a great interlude it's very very smooth and i kind of wish it was longer and uh for all my heart is still beating up to to turn you on are pretty great songs. True to life is also good, but I don't know. It could just it was kind of like a in one ear and out the other type thing. But you know, from what I remember, it's still a good song. And Tar is a good closer, but yeah, it's a great album. It's, it's a lot more pop focused. The glam stuff's pretty much gone, and the hard rock stuff is well, well not hard rock, but you know, the rock sounds kind of gone. Phil Man and Zara is still killing on the guitar though along with um, Mr. McKay on the saxophone. He would do better on other albums, but on here, he still does a good job. Lots of session players, you know, lots of lots of backing vocals, a different drummer this time, but they all do a good job. It's, uh, it's kind of a shame that this is their last album. I kind of wanted more from them, and I thought they would do more, but, you know, it's, it's, it's a good... It's a good end spot. It's a pretty, it's, it's, it's a nice bookend to their discography. And uh, one of the better pop albums I've heard from the 80s for sure. It's like, um, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. It's like, uh, it's, it's like Bowie and Kate Bush had a baby with uh, with Manzair on the guitar. It's good shit. Uh, I'm giving this a, I'm giving this a nine and a half out of 10. It is delightful. Um, I, my main complaint is the length. It's not long enough. I need more. I need more Avalon in my life. But aside from that, fantastic record. I will definitely have this on my shuffle yeah. in the near future. 
uh, to add to add into this analogy is um is Mr. McKay blowing the horns, blowing the sacks on the roof, while uh, th while this baby is being conceived, <laughs> <laughs> and and um. One other thing, uh, I'm not necessarily sure how familiar it is, but I just want to throw it out there because I really like the record. Uh, I check out, I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce it. I think it's Bete Noir from a uh, Ferry Solo. It came out in 87 and he was leaning more into this sort of pop direction he was doing. I really dig that record a good bit. I'll check that out. Okay, number three. These are These are good. These are real good. <laughs> um these are all well number three is also going to be avalon um definitely definitely a cool sounding record um i just got my new speaker set up i got my my dad's receiver and uh wow this album sounded sweet on it <laughs> it sounded so good um not all songs it's not a five for me it's not quite a five i don't think every song is is perfect it's not quite there but um it is so consistent throughout very sounds so cool and you know lyrically it might not be the, the best of their catalog but, that, but that's okay for me um i i i i'm an i i can echo most of what yammy just said um i think he hit the nail on the head i i, I think i i like I like most of these songs a, a good bit. Um, and what I, what I really appreciate, I, I actually appreciate that, that it's nice and tidy. I, I I'm, I'm, I'm starting to appreciate shorter albums. Um, and you know, I, I think that it's not, it's not front loaded at all. The back, um, is great with take a chance with me and, uh, true to life being there to really lift up the end. Um, but obviously more than this is just such a cool intro. They, they have a lot of, great intro songs to to their records and um this might be the best of all of them um maybe we'll, we'll find out uh it it's it's beautiful um the sounds on this album are uh sultry is the word i want to use they're they're just they're just so beautiful it's it's sexy it's groovy they're they're sensible pop songs um just so easy to listen to and to appreciate. I, I I don't think this one takes much effort. You don't. I, I want to listen again, but I don't need to to remember how how cool this record is, and just how obvious, um, obviously strong the eighties eighties pop. Um, I have very little issues with this record. It's a four out a four point five out of five. Number three, Avalon. Man, I'm so, man, I'm so glad that's neither of your number ones. I, I, I was I was really worried. Yeah, I'm not that basic. <laughs> uh, to, to clarify, it's still a good record. I love oh, more yeah. than this. It's just the full record. It, it's it's not what I want from the band. And you mentioned how it's more than this is like a fantastic opener. And I'm inclined to agree, but it still might not even make my top seven of their openers. <laughs> Because wow. it's just not top seven. <laughs> Come okay, on. okay, fine. It, it's better than the midnight hour. <laughs> I, love I like that one. <laughs> yeah, wait I, a minute. I, I like that one. <laughs> I, I like pretty much every song in the catalog. So I mean, it doesn't matter much to me. Um, okay, number three. Kicking off my last conventional choice. Debut, Roxy Music. Really excellent debut record. Four and a half stars again. Uh, Brian Eno has such an interesting role on this one because um, I don't think he really knew what the hell he was doing. Um, his electronics are kind of just like sparsely thrown in there, just sort of haphazard. And it, had, it has this like really cool dichotomy between this like killer rock band and Eno's weird ass experimental shit. And it comes together to make, it, it makes like this sort of, I don't know, it's kind of like a Picasso painting or something because it's bad, but it's cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I think Phil Manzanera and Andy McKay showcase how brilliant they're going to be across the entire catalog here as well. Uh, remake Remodel was fucking like shit. If I was ever, if I was ever to make anything even half as talented as that, I'd probably 
explode just out of excitement because that song's amazing. If there is something is just so good. Virginia Plains, brilliant. It's their most, they had songs that sort of follow a similar template to that. That's like their first real excessive, like over the top glam track. It's awesome. I love it. It's the best song T-Rex ever made. And uh, Sea Breezes is also really beautiful. Like you said, it's really just great across the board. And I got nothing bad to say about it. I just like two records more. So, Yeah, that, that, the debut is very good. It might go up after I give it another couple of chances. I still really like it, but I don't know. It's the, It was the hardest for me to, to get into. I don't think it's a great place to start, to be honest. I think you can just if you can probably work backwards, to be honest. But anyway, that's besides the point. Now, my number two. All right, these two are fucking ridiculously hard to place. The other ones were hard too, but these two was like it was like picking, uh, picking like what kid you love the most. <laughs> Sophie's choice, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Hey, so Ryan. <laughs> yeah, my number two is. 1973's banger Stranded a uh, nice little 41 minute LP starts off strong with Street Life fucking killer just like you and Amazona also killer Psalm um, the first time I heard it didn't love it second time I heard it kind of love it it's, it's, it's a great song it's, it's, very, it's pretty long 8 minutes does it need to be I don't know, but I think it works. It's it's one of the uh, I don't, I don't know how to say it. Is 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 it a little self indulgent? Maybe, but you know it, it works here. Like there's not really a a bad sound on it. Serenade's pretty good. And all right, if this song wasn't on here, this album might be a bit lower. I'm talking about a song for Europe. Holy shit, that song is amazing. And uh, I'm gonna gush about uh, Phil Manon's era for a bit, if I haven't already. His guitar work on a song for Europe is like sublime. I don't practice There's some riffs he does in the middle part of the song that that that, that sounds like uh, this is high praise. It sounds like guitar work from Abbey Road. That's how good it sounds. Like if, if you listen to Never give me your money, or um, oh fuck, what's the other one? I uh, I want you. She's so heavy, like shit, like that. And you listen to a song for Europe. The, the guitar work is like as good as that, and they they sound similar, but not like in a ripoff kind of way, more like an homage, but still sounds unique. Yeah, just a fucking killer tune. And Mother of Pearl is also great. It's it's very fun and and like off the wall, but still like listenable and like. Like catchy and like fun and it ends pretty strong as well with sunset a pretty appropriate uh title and track to end with in my opinion yeah this album oh god uh <laughs> i'm giving it a 10 fuck it it's 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 perfect i love it so much it's just it's, it's crazy it's glammy it's like evocative it's just oh it sounds great <laughs> i love it so much it's, it's, i would i'm definitely gonna fucking have this on my downloaded spotify albums for sure it's, it's, it's magnifique man i'm not gonna lie you oh. fucked me there for a second i thought because <laughs> you said 73 i forgot that stranded and for your pleasure both came out in 73 i thought you were doing the mix-up i thought yeah, you were no, playing no. this a little mix-up yeah. i fucking, didn't take it then until i saw that <laughs> it's fucking bogus man yeah bogus man well um We'll talk about Stranded soon. For now, I have to talk about the debut, which is my number two. Um, it's it's a four and a half. It's it's awesome. This is such a cool intro to the band. And I listened to this discography for the first time. I went back and picked albums that I wanted to refresh myself on. But um, I listened to this first to familiarize myself and uh going through an order and this blew me away i cannot believe uh no one ever told me about this album i don't know who was hiding this from me but um this is awesome this, this is so cool and to be a debut it's 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 weird for sure it is it is it is 
arty. It is glammy. It Brian Eno is all over this thing, just doing weird shit. And um, it sounds so cool. The rhythm section is awesome. I I love I love Brian Ferry's voice. I love both of the Brian's here. I think I think they're doing great work. And uh, he's he, you know, he's not quite developed all of his uh I don't know what the word like flares and um, all of his all of his cool sensibilities yet, but just naturally, just coming on the first record, so sultry, so nice, um, just makes you want to melt. And um, this album slightly front loaded, slightly front it loses me just a little bit in the back. And if if the back could come up to as good as the the first like five songs. <laughs> um then i i i would probably this would probably be my number one and it would probably be a five um but i i do think that I, i've already said it but the instrumentation experimentation uh makes for just a, a an incredible debut effort and uh the clear standouts are obviously remake remodel uh 2hb is awesome i like virginia plan uh if there is something is great and uh you know I, I, I do, even though I think it's a little bit front loaded, um, it's a comfortable sail through all the way to Bitter's End, which I think is, is a great um, backtrack. So overall, this album is so cool. I can't believe this was hiding um, back in 1972, but uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I will continue to have a lot of fun with this. This is right up my alley. Um, I can't quite give it a five, but a, a strong four, four and a half stars for uh, for Roxy Music. Nice. I am nice. glad you guys I, love this as much as you did. Yeah, actually, a lo- little point of contention for me. Um, th- the front half is great, but honestly, I, I think I like the last half a bit more. I- I'm not sure what it is. Okay, fair it's enough. Just, it's just fair very enough. like hey. atmos- atmospheric, <laughs> and just cool sounding. Sea Breeze is like the main reason. If it wasn't, oh there, yeah. If 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 that, if that song wasn't in the last half, I'd probably sing a different tune. But yeah, that last half is sublime, and the okay. first half is the first half still good, but you know, a bit more spotty in my opinion. I'm looking at the track listing now. It's weird. It's like all the really glammy, really energetic sort of rockers are all in the first half, and the second half is sort of more almost like an ambient. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which could be compared to. Um, a record by Sir Bowie. And uh, while I'm here, well, I got these sitting next to me. Oh, yeah. Gun to your head, you know, with Bowie or you know, with Roxy Music. I see that. I see that was a tough one there. Wait, uh, oh, wait, wait. What were you saying? I'm sorry. Gun to your head. If you had to pick, which, you know, do you prefer with Bowie or with Roxy? Oh, Bowie. Maybe a strong disagreement um, from me. He's it's, good with Roxy, but I don't know. He kind of found his like, he, he found his uh, he found his groove with Bowie. I think he's trying to find it with Roxy. I fair enough. I tend to agree. Um, I also like him with Talking Heads. So, yeah, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Much Talking Heads did uh did he work with them? Uh, wasn't it Fear Music? I don't know. I don't know Talking Heads enough. I've only heard Speaking in Tongues. So I'm um, gonna check myself real quick. Oh, uh, okay. Well, yeah, well, it was produced by Brian Eno. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. That makes I, sense. I really like Fear Music, so gotcha. I, I, I don't know. That's a... Talking Heads are one I need to put on the back burner. Hell, maybe not even for the show, just for a deep dive on my own. Yes. Yeah, really gotta listen to more of them. So um I've been really playing with you guys. I've been, oh, I've, I, I've been fucking you a bit here. Oh Let, no! Let's keep the streak going. My two is Siren. Um, okay. It's incredibly difficult for me to place this record. I could see it going above or below the records that I have it in between. But from Country Life to Manifesto, it's a great streak. But I think that this in between is incredibly interesting. And it's a perfect blending of their strong pop sensibilities and their art rock roots. Um, it's just a really great marriage, and it works so well due to the excellence of the core three of the band on this record. This is probably Fairy's best vocal record. The throw of it all, I love She, Sell- she Sells. Uh, both Ends Burning is incredible. Nightingale, Just Another High. They're just outstanding songs. And every song here is at the very least very good. 
Uh, my main issue is that I think at the back half is a decent bit stronger than the first half. Uh, I think at the first half kind of gets overshadowed by uh, Love It's a Drug and uh, Seashells On. That side too, I think at that side it's able to shine a little bit more. But um, who the fuck cares? This record's amazing. Uh, it's just so great. It's an incredible culmination of everything they were going to do. I just don't think it's quite my favorite, but still four and a half stars. Absolutely great. Yeah, right. I, I, dig, I dig that quite a bit. That's a superb album. I kind of wanted to put it higher, but I don't know. The second list, I kind of had to, you know, shift spaces and whatnot. And, uh, oh yeah, it's my turn. All right, y'all, y'all probably, y'all probably know where I'm going with this. We deduced, yeah. Yeah. You're Deduction. picking flesh and blood. Yeah, yeah, flesh and blood. Sorry, I, I fooled you the whole time. No, it's it's for your pleasure. From 1973. Um, yeah, deduction aside or process of whatever aside, if you could tell by my reactions to, or these fine people, placed for your pleasure, and. Uh, and on, a, and on a specific Roxy Music ranking video, a uh, certain someone placed it near the bottom, and that and that made me really upset. Certain really. two people. Yeah, yeah. God, don't even. All right, I'll, I'll get into that some other time. But yeah, this album is fucking phenomenal. In fact, it's so phenomenal, I made a diagram. All right, I made a, I made it. This is this diagram fucking sucks ass, but we're going with it. Okay. See, see the circle right here? Uh, this is how I felt after listening to the debut. Yeah. Not really leaning one way or the other. I'm more intrigued than anything else, but okay. you know, I, did, I wasn't like crazy about him yet. And when I listened to For Your Pleasure, uh, it went over here, which means I fucking love this album yeah. so much. So the right, this this side means I, you know, this, this, this side's a good thing. So yeah. Sure, sure. <laughs> Further on the X yeah. coordinate. Yeah. yeah, okay, I got you. Yeah, exactly. That's a sexy so, yeah. diagram right there. Thank you, I appreciate no, it. No problem. So, judging by the diagram, y'all probably can gather that I, I fucking dig this album quite a bit. Um, I'm going to give a little, a little shout out to my boy, Andy McKay, who, unfortunately, I didn't talk about as much uh, previously, but He's, he's, he's fucking ph phenomenal here. Oh my God. Like he's, he's great on everything else, but here is like, this is like his, uh, his, his rock of Gibraltar. What, what is it? It's Mona Lisa or some shit. Like he's just perfect on it. Like he never misses a note. He's just not even, not even just on sax on oboe as well. On freaking, I think he plays the flute on this as well. Let me check. One second. Oh, he doesn't play a flute. He does play the electric organ though, and it sounds great. But yeah, this is this. It sounds great. The production's impeccable. It's very ahead of its time too. It sounds like 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 new wave stuff you'd hear later in the '70s, which I think this is when new wave started. I'm not too sure, but honestly, this this, this album. Honestly, I kind of believe D, like bands like Devo. Or even fucking Elvis Costello maybe ape, aped off this a little bit. I, I, I can't prove that. I, that's probably not true at all. But if he told me that was the case, I, I believe you for sure. Because this album is just way ahead of the curve, even for, for fucking the early 70s. So, yeah, dick writing aside, you know, everyone plays great on it. The production's great. It sounds impeccable. Let's talk about the songs. Uh, Do the Strand is a, a great opener. I think it's my favorite opener for um roxy music albums uh what, what's a what's another good one manifesto than, yeah yeah manifesto uh, more than this is a close second but and um love is the drug but yeah uh do the strand is so much fun beauty queen's also great strictly confidential not as strong as the other two but i still think it's a good time Editions of You and, and Every Dream Home, A Heartache, phenomenal, really good lyrical writing. Lyr lyrical writing, that sounds stupid. Really good lyrics from, you know, Fairy and Co. Freaking superb. Oh, yeah, his vocals are so much better here than the debut. Hot take, maybe. But I, I think Brian Ferry, he, he went from like a middling vocalist to me to like 
like I went from like you know being mid like you know neutral about him to like really liking his voice. I'm not sure what happened, but I don't know. I re I really dig the way he sounds on this album. And uh, all right, let, let, let's uh, the the elephant in the room, or the man in the room, the bogus man. Bogus. I love this song. I love this song. I don't I don't care what you two say. You two are just haters. The song is so much fun. The chorus is so funny. It sounds great. The bass playing is great. It's just it's just like it's a good time. I don't know. I don't see how anyone could hate this. It's just so silly and like off kilter, but like in a good way, not like a fucking, you know, Paul Simon. Uh, you can call me out kind of way, but like you know, a nice little, just a nice little fun like glam song that you don't really hear anymore, unfortunately. And uh, Grey Lagoons is great, and the title track is also great. A uh, nice little, nearly seven minute closer. Yeah, this is another ten for me. I'm, I'm gonna wrap this up. I'm sorry. Uh, you know, I'm gonna end the gushing real quick. Yeah, it's, it's a ten for me. I think it sounds great. I think it's a huge step up from the debut, and I think it's a uh, from this album up to let's say Siren is like the perfect streak. Country Life is the weakest of the bunch, but actually, sorry. The debut is the weakest of the bunch, and Country Life is the second weakest. But For Your Pleasure Onward is uh, Up the Siren is like a perfect like running streak for me. Four great albums, and it starts off with the best of them, in my opinion. So yeah, 10 out of 10. Fantastic record. Y'all, you two are just haters. I I I think it's <laughs> great. I it's my number four. I I I I just think they did better, but I, it's a That's very fine. fun album, and you you talk about it. You're, you're talking about it makes it sound um, sound great. So I'll, I'll I'll revisit it for sure. All right, I promise, buddy. Were you gonna say we're you gonna say and make it sound better than it actually is? Yeah, I, mean, I was thinking about saying that. That would be pretty mean. <laughs> that would have been really focused. Hey, up, hey, you know? I need more time. I need more time with it to make that kind of sweeping statement. All right, um, I can. I held my. Tongue. I can say it. <laughs> you can say it. That's yep. fair. Oh yeah, of uh, course. You, you make it sound better uh, than it is. Uh, I okay. must say your claims are somewhat bogus. <laughs> hey, it's out there. Hey, I, uh, I will. I, I will say though, I am the biggest hater here, being at uh, you know four and a half stars from number five. I fucking hate these guys. Bunch <laughs> been lying this whole time. Uh, uh, okay, number one. This is it. It's it's stranded. It had to be. This is a five. This album is this album frogs. This is so cool. Come on. Eno's gone. He's out. The better Brian won. Sorry. Um maybe not. Maybe not better. Right? They're different. They're it's not about better or worse. It's just different. But but uh Brian Ferry's still around and this album is awesome. I I think they they've honed in on on what makes them great and um i think kicking Eno out kind of forced them to focus right um it's amazing to me that this was released in the same year that brian Eno left um in the same year as for your pleasure because um the turnaround is incredible um i think the songwriting is a little more straightforward than the the, the previous two records there's nice twists throughout like they didn't forget what Brian Eno showed them, but they they took it to their own, and the musicians are just in top form. Um, the sax is incredible. Uh, the bass sounds awesome throughout. Um, and overall, my favorite vocal performance from from Brian Ferry here. I think he just sounds at, at his best. Um, Street Life comes in swinging. Talk about first songs. Street Life. Ooh. Um, there, they got strong opening songs. They do. I, I think, I think basically across the board, they, they know how to start an album and uh, that's a cool trait, but uh, this one, I especially love. Um, uh, let's see. I, I love uh, Amazona, Amazona. I don't know. I don't know how he pronounces it. He's got, you know, that flair, uh, 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 just like you, um, you know, I, 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 I think Amazona specifically, highlights what i love about this album so much is it's it's kind of like the straightforward art pop um but there's still this personality that just oozes from from this sound and a little bit of experimentation that that kind of keeps things flowing um 
I was expecting Eno's uh, departure to leave a hole that needed to be kind of filled, but I think I think these guys just figured it out like right away who they who they wanted to become, and um, all of these songs are just so strong, and it's hard to be upset that that Eno's gone. Um, yeah, I can see Psalm being a little divisive um, at eight minutes. It's kind of just like fairies rambling <laughs> over it. Um, I love it. I I think it's cool. Um, I think the the music underneath is just kind of kind of nice. And uh, Serenade uh, kicks it back with a short rocker. It's like two and a half minutes or something. And a song for Europe could be your favorite Roxy music song. And I would believe you. I a song for Europe is is phenomenal and a highlight of the album in its own right. And um, and uh, Perry, it, it just it's just like the perfect song for him. It, it, the, the lyrics fit his his sultry voice. Just it's just buttery. It's just beautiful. Um, I love I love a song for Europe, and I haven't even gotten to Mother of Pearl yet. I mean, it's just this album just has so much to offer. Um, Mother of Pearl is a rock and tune. Um, could uh, it, it, that that could be my favorite track of the entire discography. It's seven minutes and it just rocks. It just rocks. Um, sunset is a great closer. It's a cool sunset to the album. Um, the keys are awesome. The bass is phenomenal, and um, it's a it's a it's a perfect finish to to a great album. It's a five. I I I listened once. I thought that was pretty cool. I listened again and I'm like, this is this is this is good. This is like really good. And uh, I can't wait to listen more and to uncover stuff about this album that I've, that I've definitely missed, but um, I'm, I'm like three listens in and, and it's a five. I I'm, I'm confident that um, this is my favorite Roxy music album. So stranded. Well I'm like, said. I'm like a proud mother. I, I came in my, my baby boys. Baby not no, <laughs> not knowing of the beauty of Roxy music. And I got the five. I got. I, they they got one. They came they, out. They came out grown. <laughs> Roxy music loving men. That's right. I'm about to knock them back to infantiles. <laughs> Talking about manifesto, baby. Let's go. I fucking love. I just don't this get record. it. I just don't. But why? Tell me why. Well, let, I gotta hear this. Let me explain. Um, <laughs> often regarded as the worst record by Roxy Music, and in many ways, that is absolutely correct. Um, it's definitely one of their less, their least complex. Um, one could argue an incredibly sellout record, and um, yeah, you're one hundred percent correct. I don't give a shit. It's fucking incredible. <laughs> um it's it's pretty close to siren in the sound but it's leaning far more into the pop direction and if this record is one thing it is absolutely just catchy as hell fairy's hooks across the record are just absolutely top notch they're total earworms that just get festered in there like dance away cry 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 uh the title track just everything gets stuck and it culminates so good uh and while not as expressive, I find the playing just incredible, especially Andy McKay's sax. The title track is amazing. Angel Eyes and Trash as well. Still Falls the Rain and Cry Cry Cry. A bit of a disco flavor that works just so well. Stronger through the years and spinning around are just both excellent sort of slower, longer cuts. And there's still just so much pop goodness with a song like Dance Away. To me, it's an absolutely stacked record with this band at their apex to which they would ever be. And while absolutely far from their most creative, it's the record of theirs that I want to listen to the most. And somehow, I'm only at four and a half. You both surpassed me in fandom. Yeah. And I didn't I just, slight I, 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 a bit. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you, you had a lot of four and a half, so I thought you, oh, I yeah. thought you'd find a five in there. I, yeah, I, I, I don't know. Maybe we listen to different records. Um, <laughs> I, I, look, I'll give it another try. I, I, Dance Away was nice. Um, it, it was, it was quite nice. I don't hate the album. I just, um, 
I, I watched the TLM video again after kind of listening to these just to get a sense of how crazy my takes were and seeing how high they placed manifesto. I'm like, I don't know what I'm, what I'm missing here, but um, I just think they, they, um, they have, they have better <laughs> albums. I mean, I'm sorry. I, I, I mean, I'll be brutally honest with you. You, you aren't missing a lot. <laughs> it's, it's a pop record. It's a, you get it or you don't sure. sort of thing. Sure. And um, I wish you were right, but um, hey, hey, I think it's cool it to have different number ones. Absolutely. I think you know if you can be passionate about it, if you can sell it, it's like for you sure. know, more one, power to you. One could say that I was a bit bogus for this controversial opinion. Um, you, you, you were pretty bogus, man. Bogus. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, this is this is rough. This is this is this is fun. This is enjoyable. I think, uh, there, there's no bad album. Even no, Manifesto isn't close. bad. So it's uh, it, it's like, um, you know, I think we, we we mentioned this. There, you could you could have these in any order, and I think you could make a good case for it. I yeah. I think any permutation of of these would would kind of make sense. I mean that the sounds are so unique and. Um, I just appreciate a lot about this group. I, I mean, I, I, I got to learn more about these members so I can look at some of their other spinoff stuff clearly, because um, I think that the, just the instrumentation throughout is just phenomenal. And uh, I was, I was just really impressed with, with how smooth all of it was, how exciting, um, exciting and well done. You know, sometimes it's, it, 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 it's a hard balance to strike with smooth kind of sophista pop without sounding like too, you know, elevator music or, you know, you're, you're kind of in one camp or the other oftentimes, but I think, you know, I, I, I think they kind of do get these, I don't want to call them prog, but proggy kind of sensibilities and they, and, and the glam comes in and, and, and it's just, it makes for such a fun ride. Even, even the albums I didn't care for as much there, there's still like a fun listen. And uh, I think that's, that's really cool. Um, I appreciate that it's, I, I, I do wish there were more to listen to, but I think running through the discography with eight records is pretty easy to do. It's not really a chore. And uh, I'm excited. I, I'm putting a lot of this into my into my rotation and I'll be I'll be jamming out. I'll be asking my friends, <laughs> shoving Roxy music down their throats for sure. Yeah, this is probably one of the few bands where I can say I, I liked everything. Um, even my favorite bands like like Pink Floyd or Genesis or the Beatles. I have a couple albums I do not like from them. But with Roxy Music, I pretty much liked everything to varying degrees for sure. But I think they have one of the more solid, you know, lineup of of LPs that I've heard from a I don't want to say mainstream artist, but from an artist in general. Just just it's very consistently strong. Even at their weakest, they're still very good. Not many people can say that. For sure. The less I say about Pink Floyd, probably the better. Um, oh, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm glad that you share my enthusiasm. Hell, maybe even more. I, yeah. This may sound crazy, but I feel pretty confident in saying it. Is they're almost definitely a top ten band for me now after doing this. Uh, I want to note doing this before. I had two records that were at four and a half stars that stayed the same. I had a record that I had three and a half stars that bumped to a four and a half. And then I had two records that went up to a four and a half stars. Mm. So I have five absolutely great Roxy Music records. I have two that I think are incredibly good that I broke Kami's heart with. And if anybody wants this, I'm selling this Avalon CD. Uh, I spent like 10 bucks on it. So I'll do the same shipping and handling, of course. But no. Uh, yeah, uh, I just absolutely love this group to death. I think that they're one of the most musically interesting and really just one of the most just overall captivating groups out there. There's so much that you can find within just these eight records, and they each showcase more and more the more and more you keep listening to them. Even though I'm not as into it now, I could see over time, me gravitating more to Avalon, maybe moving away from something like the debut. And it would totally make sense because there's so much fluidity. There's so much brilliance to be found across all of these records. And 
really just all I can ask is for you to listen and for you to make your own ranking because um well it won't be as good as mine, but um you can try your best. What would you recommend starting from beginning to end, or would you recommend just like being more spotty with it? Um I feel like a good place to start might be Siren. I think it I think it's got the best of their artiness, but it has a good bit of the uh accessibility and catchiness. It has some right. good it has like some good stuff like Love is the Drug. It's got uh well, it's got Love is the Drug and uh Pass that, it's just got some bangers. So I don't know. That being said though, that that was Roxy Music. Yeah. That was Roxy Music. This was Roxy. a fun one. Oh, oh yeah. for sure. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're not one of my favorite groups yet. They're getting up there for me. Give it a week. They're, they're, they're probably going to knock out some of the top spots for me. Nice. And by top, I mean like, you know, the, like the bottom half. But <laughs> but yeah, this is a fucking great ass band. I'm surprised I never heard oh, this yeah. before. This is right up my alley. For sure. Yeah, yeah absolutely. I'm surprised that you guys liked it as much as you did. Like I, I, I didn't think you were gonna get to five. I figured maybe a four and a half for each of you, but uh, I mean, Cammy coming out here with two tens—that's fucking. I don't even know if I have two tens. Yeah, if he, if he asked me that a couple weeks ago when I first got the debut, I'd probably agree with you. But man, I don't know. It's just such a, it's such a great like batch of albums. I'm oh, surprised. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm surprised they didn't go on for longer and sell out and become terrible. Hey. I'm, glad they, I'm glad they, you know, they, they stopped when they were still good, kind of, but I kind of wish they made more, if that makes sense. They they tried their best in 79, but they just couldn't not be good. Yeah. So, with that being said, though, next week, as decided by a poll on the Music Meltdown Discord server, which I'll have linked below, uh, going to the 60s, going actually back to the 50s, to talk about uh, the King of Soul, one of the originators, one of the uh, classics, Sam Cooke. Hey, let's go. About 11 records, I want to say. I'm only counting when he was alive. And um, yeah, that's going to be fun because uh, not the most well-versed in the uh, genre, but man, do I love what I know. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed. Um, I hope you were able to stand this list that I put together, I understand. I uh, had a couple of knives th- throughout, but uh, it is what it is. Sam Cook's coming up. I hope you enjoy, and I hope that you had a great time. But 